I don't know about you, but the first day of school in my house was a big deal. See, my mom wanted to make it special. So she would get us up, there are five of us, get us out of bed, make us a special breakfast, choose our clothing. The breakfast probably was like Mickey Mouse pancakes, you know, with a sausage as a smile and plenty of whipped cream um, on top. And then she would pack our lunch and get us out the door and onto the bus. But one thing she would always remember, she would always remember to take that first day of school photo. You know the one. Yeah, the one where you have the, the hair that's sticking up that you wish wasn't, where you're in front of your door, where you actually want to be with your friends and don't want people on the bus to see you, right? Where I'm a child of the 80s, so I probably was wearing striped socks up to my knees, short shorts, and a striped shirt. Yeah, that photo. Well, this was no ordinary day. This was the first day of first grade. And if you know first grade, you're no longer a kindergartner. You're big. You're taller, you're stronger, and you're definitely wiser, right? And so there I am, getting off to school, everything's going smoothly, and I realize I forget my lunch. I should have taken it as a sign, right? Um, so I get to school, everything's going well. Um, this is a great photo. Everything's going well, and all of a sudden it's recess time, and I need to prove myself. Right, so there I am. I want to show all my friends. I just met them that morning. They're my besties now. I want to show them that I can go all the way across the monkey bars and back without touching. But that's not good enough. So I go on top of the monkey bars. I'm dangling upside down. I show them no hands. Whap! You can see, what that, that, you can see that one coming. I fall to the ground, break my arm, get sent home on the first day of school. First day of school blues start. Well... Fast forward one year, and I want to redeem myself. It's the first day of school of second grade. And there I am. Everything's going according to plan. My mom takes that first day of school photo. I this time have a bowl cut, maybe even neon clothes, depending. I sometimes wore these MC Hammer pants that were awesome, right? And so I'm off to school. Everything's going well. I make it there. And then first period um, is almost ending. And I start feeling sick. I realize I need to make it to the restroom. The bell rings, and I carry my tow tray. And tow trays were these things where we weren't allowed to bring backpacks, right? We didn't need 9,000 pounds of books to study for a test to pass. And we, I was carrying this tow tray. It would, we would slide it under, put all of our materials in, and then take it out and bring it to the next class. So I'm carrying my tow tray out. I'm feeling sick. I'm like, oh, no. I need to make it to the bathroom. And I can't find a receptacle. So you... Better believe it. There I am. I throw up in my tow tray, ruin all my stuff, and I'm sent home again on the first day of school. <laughs> Two years in a row. Right? But my past wasn't always mired in the first day of school blues. You see, I actually remember a positive past, one of joy and laughter and fun. I remember being able to dress up like a clown before it was creepy. Right? <laughs> I remember long-distance road trips with my family in our Ford Econoline van, one that had fold-down seats and a TV-VCR combo. Yeah, I remember those awkward family reunions, the one where everyone knows you and is pinching your cheeks, but you don't know anyone. And you have that one awkward uncle who tells the most inappropriate jokes. I remember. I remember laughter and love. I remember playing soccer and campfires. I remember sleepovers and birthday parties. I remember this past that was magical. I also remember world events through the news, like the Gulf War, Challenger. I remember Columbine, 9-11. I remember This Is Your Brain on Drugs and No Child Left Behind. I remember elections of presidents and social media when it first came about. You see, these memories shape me. These memories from my past construct a narrative. But the memories that shaped me most were from the photos that my mother and father took collected, archived, and put into an album, right? These are the memories that I, I recall. These are the memories that are important. That time that I broke my arm, guess what? It's in an album, documented, right? It tells me, it reminds me what actually happened. Would I remember the same thing? Would I even remember the story if it wasn't there, right? What about our collective story, our community, our university, our businesses? What stories do we remember? What visuals represent us? What visuals will project us into the future? See, South Bend, this community, has a really interesting story. There is nothing around here. It was fields and farmland. And all of a sudden, University of Notre Dame comes. 
South Bend starts and is formed. And you see hustle and bustle and businesses and building growing up. You see neighborhoods coming. You see paved roads, people celebrating on the streets. This is a destination, a place people want to come. But then something changes in the narrative. This is when the Studebaker closed. Right? People are leaving. And a new narrative is formed. There are new visuals that you, you, that you see in the archives. And these visuals are more depressing. Neighborhoods are being shuttered. Buildings are um, being vacated. And this, these images last for decades. Sometimes the images that we keep actually shadow, um, cast a shadow over us. Sometimes the images that we keep hinder progress. And so this, for decades, we see these photos. There are other stories that are told in the civil rights movement here in South Bend. There were riots. There was clashes between the police and the black community. These are visuals that we keep and are important to help us remember who we were. They also can um, hinder progress. They can define us, and we can't let them. We need to make sure that we're telling and showing and sharing the right visuals and the right story. Don't get me wrong. We need to tell these stories. We need to remember. We need to use them to fight for injustice. But we also need to make sure that we are progressing and telling new stories. There are other stories that are untold, that we don't see. What about the stories from the LGBT community? What about the stories from the Hispanic community? What about stories from um, migrant farmers? What about immigrants? What about religious diverse communities? These stories are sometimes kept out of our history, kept out of our history books. We can't forget those. It changes our narrative and our understanding of the world. If someone's story is left out, what does that tell people? What does it tell about, about our community? Are we welcoming or are we not? This is a story of the Garza family, migrant farmers who came from Texas to Michigan and then set, settled in South Bend. You see, Rene Francisco Garza documented his story, documented the Latino community, documented um, the migrant farm work. He actually brought his camera, snuck it in to document it. He shows stories of quinceañeras. He shows stories of... Um, celebration, as well as protest, as well as um, moving forward and building community. This is a story we're sharing and remembering and adding to our visual collective. But what do we do now? How has our story changed? How is it changing? You see, photography actually has power. It can change our memory. There's research done where researchers doctored photos and put the participants in a hot air balloon ride and then ask them to visualize themselves in it and tell that story. 50% of the people um, in the, the participants actually remembered going in a hot air balloon ride. Photography has the power to change memory, the power to transform. We need to make sure that we are trans telling the right stories. right? But today, everything has changed. We have social media. Our phones have replaced our photo albums. We actually, we recall things through this device, right? We share about anything, like anything, and then forget anything. We comment, we scroll, we use hashtags to try to gain followers, and then we forget. We are offloading our memories onto devices. And sometimes social media helps us remember, right? Five years ago today, this is what I was doing. Social media is selecting the memories for us. Are those the stories we want told? It is estimated that we took this past year 1.2 to 1.3 trillion photos. How can we even tell stories like that? How can we find the stories? What's important? What visuals should we be keeping? Well, see, social media isn't all bad, all right? I might rail on it, but social media also connects us. Now, this is Malia Campo, local Instagrammer, right? It actually, social media lets people have a platform to share their ideas, gives us a platform to um, lift up our voice, to protest, to march. Social media changes us. It connects us. And you know, I was in a, at an Instagram meetup here in South Bend, and she already knew who I was because my wife helped deliver her baby, and she saw me on social media. 
It has the power to transform, to change, to develop, to create community. And we need to be sure that we're telling the right stories on social media. We can't just scroll endlessly and endlessly and endlessly. We have to start stopping, pausing, reflecting, and sharing better stories, right? But do we know how to find the right story? Do we know how to tell the right story? What stories even matter? So if we want to start change, we want to see change, we need to tell better stories. South Bend has an amazing story. We see it. We feel it. Check this out. We're at Idea Week, right? Things have been happening. There are new buildings popping up. There's so many things that are going on that are positive. We need to continue to tell the story in a positive light. We need to continue to reflect and to build um, on what we are doing. So in the future, we could actually change the future by telling the right stories, by sharing what's important, by making sure no one is left out. So there are some local photographers here who are telling stories and doing it well. These are stories that inspire and bring hope. Right? Imagine if we started telling stories of the everyday. Local places and spaces and people who have been making it. This is a local pizzeria who's been here, um, who, have been, who has been around for 30 years. Right? Jacob Titus walks the streets, tells stories, and shares about people and place, trying to reimagine South Bend. Right? He told the story of the pizzeria and it was shared on social media more than any of his other stories. And you know what? I tried the pizza just for this and it's damn good. So, you know, we can support each other um, through uh, telling the right stories. We can highlight the people um, who are important to our community. Imagine if our universities, our community, our organizations and businesses started sharing stories of inspiration, stories of hope, stories of raising awareness together um, and to bring change. This is a story of the Bengal Bouts here at Notre Dame, told by Grant Beachy, taken on an old camera, helping us uh, reimagine this story in a new light. Right? Imagine if more of us were telling stories of hope and change. I saw this on social media, actually, um, and I was just so inspired by it. This is to raise awareness and money uh, for a mission in Bangladesh. There's so many of these stories. This is a story worth sharing. Imagine if we started th rethinking place and space. We actually um, told stories in our spaces so that it would help us remember them differently or think differently. These are local sculptures in South Bend, and Abigail Edwards decided to take a dancer and bring her into uh, the sculptures to reimagine what a sculpture is and public art and movement and beauty. And then, the South Bend Museum of Art reshares these stories to help us, to help the community remember the beauty and the importance of public art. This is a story worth sharing, a story worth telling, a story worth capturing. Or imagine if colleges, cities, um, communities, organizations gave people a platform to tell their own stories. These are stories from my student workers at Bethel College. They found these stories, and they thought they were important and wanted to share them. This is Grace Hilty, a photographer, who shared the story of an adopted student and her life and her family and what that means to her. This is a story worth sharing. Or imagine um, telling stories about conservation and how students can conserve both on and off campus, told from a student perspective. This is a story worth sharing. Or imagine if we told stories of diversity on our campuses, in our organizations, and businesses, right? If we want a diverse society and a diverse community, we need to be telling a diverse story. And we need to make sure that our diverse populations are telling their own story. This is a story worth sharing, taken by Brenna Huff. And this one by Miranda Terry, student worker again, is just about beauty and symbolism, about hope and tattoos. Right? It helps us reflect on who we are. This is a story worth sharing. You see, we have amazing stories here in South Bend. We have storytellers working. 
We need to make sure that we are a part of that. We need to make sure that we are telling the right stories, finding the right stories, and making a better future. What stories will you tell? Thank you. Okay, everyone, here's your chance to stretch it out. We're going to take a 15-minute intermission.